Let's begin. Hey there, scary story fanatics! Welcome back to Cleaving Thought from Bone with your host, Sociopathic. Ever wonder what it would be like to spend the evening with your favorite Christmas spirit of all? Well, have I got a story for you. Sit back, relax, and get ready for this year's Christmas special that I like to call Slashing Through the Snow. Riley Riddler laid quiet as a stone, so resolute in stillness that one may think that he was asleep. But that was the whole idea. Riley was eleven, and his sister Anna was four. Anna was a brat, and because she was the youngest, she always got her way. Riley hated it, and he hated the fact even more that even though mom and dad catered to her every desire, Anna still acted up and tormented the entire household. He didn't understand why Santa would ever bring presents to such a nasty little girl, but, but there, in the quiet of the night that he so desperately tried to keep still within, were the sounds of something large and heavy walking through the dark house. And when he felt it was safe, Riley slowly sat up and crept from bed, ready to make his way into the hall and down to the living room to catch a glimpse of Santa leaving presents beneath the tree. Instead, however, just before he opened his door, he could hear those same loud footsteps making their way up the stairs towards his room. Riley panicked and froze. Was he coming here? Would he find him awake? The footsteps were louder now, just outside his door. Riley's breath hitched in his throat, and the anxiety made his vision blurry, but relief washed over him when he heard the footsteps slowly clomp on by, but stopping at the next door down the hallway, something he easily understood as he heard his little sister run into her room and slam her door all at the same time. Santa was entering Anna's room. Confused, Riley mustered up the courage to crack his door open and peer into the hallway. Nothing. Nothing but an empty hall and an open door to the next door bedroom. Riley crept slowly towards the open aperture, turned the corner, and froze at what he saw. Standing over his sister's bed was not Santa Claus at all, but a large, looming, ominous-looking beast. It was tall, covered in fur, and wrapped in what looked like a baggy red robe, like a dirty blanket. Two large horns protruded from the top of its head, and when it turned for a moment to look at Riley, he could see its beady eyes and sharp yellow teeth that gleamed through its sinister smile. Anna whimpered, and the beast returned his attention to her. The blankets she attempted to hide under did nothing. Still, the beast watched and reveled, savoring the moment. And as he did, Riley approached. Riley did not yell, or shout, or even express fear. He simply walked over to his sister and her blankets, pulled them off of her, and revealed her panic-stricken form to the monster. Anna shrieked, but Riley only smiled. Here you go, Krampus, Riley said with a twinkle in his eye. Krampus picked up the poor girl, kicking and screaming, somehow not waking anyone in the house, and placed her into a large, dirty burlap sack. Once inside, the monster raised the stick it held in its other clawed hand and began to beat the writhing sack with it. After a few whacks, the fabric began to soak through with red. Krampus paused and offered the stick to Riley, who was still watching on with glee. Riley greedily took the weapon from the monster and resumed the attack on his sister. It wouldn't be long after that that Anna fell limp. 
Krampus began walking off without saying a single word, but paused a moment and looked at Riley, meeting his gaze in the hallway. Krampus smiled and nodded his head toward the stairs. Really? You want me to come with you? Riley exclaimed. The boy nearly jumped with glee, scratched at his forehead, and headed off behind Krampus until they reached the fireplace. The beast reached down and scooped the boy up into his large, fur-covered arms, and with the wiggle of his beastly snout, the two of them were whisked up the flue and onto the roof like magic. Sitting perfectly on the peak of the roof was a large metal carriage like a sled, made of all black and seemingly constructed of iron. The rails and ebbing were trimmed in spiral and curved designs, like waves of obsidian reaching outward and colliding back into the frame. At the front of the sled was a harness and a single creature, looking very similar to one of Santa's iconic reindeer. Only dual horns each came to only a single point, much like a ram's only longer and curling upward instead of looping back inward. Its fur all black, and its eyes glowed a gleaming red. When Krampus sat down and took the reins, signaling for Riley to join him, the boy didn't give it a second thought, and climbed into the passenger side with enthusiasm. With a whip-like snap of the harness, the red-eyed beast jolted forward, pulling the carriage along with it, running to the edge of the roof, and then off of it, but instead of falling, the creature simply kept on forward, as if running on air, and once the sleigh had reached the edge of the roof and beyond it, it too did the same. The pair flew through the air, darker than the night sky, bypassing many houses because Krampus only visited the truly naughty, naughty children, and soon the guide at the front of the sleigh dipped down, lower and lower it glided them until a small home in the middle of nowhere was within landing reach, and a moment later they had slid safely onto the surface of the roof. Once the sleigh had stopped, Krampus stood and heaved his large form from within, and then he turned to scoop up Riley, being careful and gentle as he placed him on the freshly fallen snow beside him. Riley wanted to giggle with glee. He was spending Christmas night with a true spirit of Christmas, but he knew he had to remain as silent as possible and Krampus reinforced this when he placed a clawed digit up to his beastly lips, gesturing to Riley to do as such. Together, they walked to the top of the chimney, and just like before, Riley was quickly and magically whisked down the chimney as soon as Krampus scooped him up once again. Inside, the house was silent, and the embers of a burned-out fire were all that remained in the fireplace. A glowing fake tree glittered in the night beside where they stood on the living room rug, and after a few clomps of his foot, Riley and Krampus both stopped as the sound of creeping footsteps arose from the stairs. Together, the pair hid behind a corner, leading to another room, and watched it stealthily as a boy no older than Riley himself crept down the stairs that led into the living room. Riley couldn't believe his eyes. It was Jared, a boy that he went to school with, and tormented him relentlessly. A sinister grin to match Krampus's graced his own expression, and he almost couldn't wait until he would pounce upon this unsuspecting prey. But as the boy got close enough to the tree to touch it, it was Krampus who acted first. The beast pulled his sack from his shoulder and opened it up, dumping what Riley thought to be now empty contents onto the floor, but quietly, three small toys fell to the floor. It was a jack-in-the-box, a nutcracker, and a stuffed elephant. Krampus smiled, and with the twitch of his nose, each of the toys began to spring to life. As each marched around the corner toward Jared, he stopped. The boy was obviously taken aback, but it was Christmas after all, and Jared considered these toys had been delivered by whom he thought he had heard. Jared smiled and approached the walking-slash-rolling toys and picked each one up with glee. But as soon as he did, the jack-in-the-box sprang to life, extending its spring neck around Jared's own. 
Jared fought and tried to scream, but the stuffed pink elephant lifted its trunk, revealing a mouth of sharp teeth within, and bit hard onto Jared's leg. The boy screamed and fell over onto his back, allowing the nutcracker to pull a small plastic sword from his cotton belt and stick it into Jared's right ear. The boy howled against the restraint of the spring, only to come out as a wheezing whimper, and by now the beast had revealed itself and was upon him. Distracted by fear and pain, Jared did nothing as Krampus placed the sack over top of him. As he lifted it to his back, he spied Riley enjoying the scene that played out and also the plate of cookies that had been left beside the fireplace. Krampus shook his head and smiled as Riley scratched the itch on his own and before the moment was over, they had been whisked away back to the roof, the beast's quarry in tow. The duo flew through the night sky like a dark flash of wickedry, stopping at house to house, spreading mayhem and dismay, bringing cruel justice to those who deserved it. It had been hours, and the pitch black of night had begun to turn a shade of deep midnight purple, and Riley knew that soon their fun would be over. Krampus snickered and smiled, pointing down to a lone house far below. Riley knew that this would be their last stop. With a slide and very little ruckus at all, the sled came to a stop and the boy and his beastly companion were inside the home. This house was decorated just like so many that had come before it. Piles of presents rested beneath the tree, and upstairs, footsteps could be heard stirring. They had once again been detected, only this time, Krampus did not hide. Instead, he simply stood around the corner at the base of the steps, knowing the tree would captivate the child's interests. And that it did. A little girl crept down the stairs and eyed the tree, and once her two feet reached the bottom, that's when Krampus pounced. Before she could know what had happened, the beast was upon her, throwing the burlap sack over his shoulder and whipping her with thin twig-like branches. The woody stitches hissed as they flailed through the air, greeting the child's body with a snap causing shrieks of agony and fear. Riley looked on with delight, and as he did, he heard a noise from behind him. He turned to see a frightened little boy, a little more than half his own age, and he looked terrified. Riley jumped into action, pouncing on the boy and holding him down, yelling for Krampus to come to his aid. To ensure that the boy stayed down, Riley punched him a few times, then stood and kicked him as well. He remembered the club that he had used earlier and scanned his nearby surroundings. All he could find was a small pile of wood for the fireplace nearby. Riley picked up a log and began bludgeoning the boy. He didn't stop until the boy stopped moving. He didn't even realize that the girl's screaming had stopped long ago. Riley turned with satisfaction at what he had done, awaiting Krampus to throw the boy's body into the sack. But when he did turn, he only saw the beast staring at him, wantingly, pleased with this turn of events in a way that Riley didn't understand. In his free hand, Krampus held a sheet of yellowed paper. He held it up for Riley to see, and though he knew none of them, he recognized them as names. It was a list of children's names. Krampus's naughty list, and when Krampus pointed at the boy and shook his head, Riley finally understood. In his haste, he didn't think that maybe this child would be spared Krampus's wrath, but when Krampus began to laugh a beastly bellow, it told Riley that somehow Krampus was happy with what had happened, pleased with this turn of events. Riley's forehead itched with a ferocity and then burned. He scratched and scratched, and soon he felt two small nubs protrude from where he had been itching before he could ponder them. Each tore through his flesh to become two large horns. Riley's fingernails stretched long to become claws, and his knees buckled in the opposite direction, giving him an odd set of hind quarters similar to an animal haunch. Riley screamed, but as he did, his pitch squealed and gurgled transforming into a ghastly noise that he did not recognize as his own. Krampus smiled at the pleading boy, picked him up once more, and whisked him away 
in the silence of an early morning once again. Only this time, their night was over and it was time to return home. Riley's new home for each and every day of the year. Riley was committed to enduring the cruelty of his new master, working deep in his coal mines in the blisteringly cold. Never any respite, no chance of rescue, no hope. And even then, transformed as he was, Riley couldn't help but be amazed. For each and every day they toiled away in preparation for the one night a year they could be let loose upon the world. He didn't think there was a Christmas in hell, but it was indeed Christmas every day of the year for the master he must now serve. Well, that just goes to show you, if you're hanging out with the spirit of Christmas, obey the rules, or you could become a spirit of Christmas yourself. But don't ghost me and not return next weekend. Stop back in for more gore galore. And until then, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so I can catch you all again next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs>